now the most listened to radio personality on this entire globe, Rush Limbaugh. Rush, good to have you. Thanks, Neil. Great to be here. I mean, everybody's got to be someplace. Hey, what a great not a bad place, place to be, be here. What a great... I didn't know you were such a big golfer. Before. Oh, I've been playing since 1997 when I moved to Florida to escape New York State taxes. <laughs> And, uh, well, I'm honest about that. You're right. And, and, and you're an economics guy. That's right. I know, I know. And I just have gotten caught up with it. I, I love it. It's a, it's a way to measure improvement in things. Everywhere you go to play is beautiful. So, uh, And I'm very fortunate to have these opportunities. And you're pretty good. Right? Well, you're I'm, pretty no, good. no, I'm a 17 handy. And playing in these things, I was telling him earlier, is like a triumph of emotion over common sense. But I come out and I do it anyway. <laughs> I told you about the 92 I shot, right? And then on the second hole, what did I get? <laughs> we've me, all been there. We've all been there. Let me ask you, though, Rush. I mean, it comes out a day uh, as this tournament kicks off. You wouldn't know it. We've got this world rocked by violence, this growing escalation responding to anger, Muslim anger, other cartoons. Now a lot of people are saying it's going to affect even our society. Uh, is it that bad? Um, well, it's got the potential to. I, I think one of the biggest problems, if you, if you watch all this that you showed, uh, the cartoon anger is just the latest. These people hit us on 9-11. They hit us back in 1993. Yesterday and the day before, there were hearings about whether or not we should actually try to find out if they're going to hit us again. And one of the things that amazes me is that while we have all this glaring evidence of the threat that's posed and just who these people are, and I don't think, as I look at this, I don't think there's any way that they can be acculturated into peaceful societies. I mean, look at the, the uh, that, that cruise ship that went down. The Israeli Navy offered search and rescue assistance, and Egypt basically said, no, uh, our people would rather die instead of have been saved by you. Now, you want to talk about Middle East peace with an atmosphere like that? You've got the Democratic Party looking at President Bush as the big enemy to national security, trying to impeach him, trying to embarrass him over the spying scandal, which they have miscast. It's not domestic spying. They've made it look like they're interested in an Al Qaeda terrorist bill of rights. So yeah, I think I think we are in a in a in a sort of a trepidatious situation because the country apparently is not unified on the existence of the threat. You know what I was thinking, knowing you were coming. This is Denmark we're talking about. I mean, Denmark's a pretty peaceful country. It well, certainly means the world no and harm. And I bet you right? Denmark, up until now, has gone out of its way not to irritate or agitate these people, like Spain thought they were going to get a pass. That, that that's this just illustrates it is worldwide. Do you think that this is actually, in a perverse sense, Rush, help the president's push for wiretapping, for, for the kind of things he wants to do to protect us? I don't look at this politically. Help, it, it, when you say help the president's push, I mean, if you're looking at this from a standpoint, it's a good thing to do, it's a wise thing to do, something we need to get done. Yeah, all this stuff obviously is convincing the American people. I don't think the American people remain to be convinced after 9-11. The Democratic Party and the American left act like they remain to be convinced that we even have an enemy. So I think in case of George W. Bush, where this is its concerns, foreign policy, national security, the heck with the polls and all, he's going to do his job. To heck with what the media is saying about him or what Jimmy Carter says at a funeral about him, he's going to go do his job, and we're thankful for that. I think he all ought to be. But, you know, it's funny. When Americans are polled on this subject, Rush, they're all for polling the bad guys and, and tapping the bad guys. When they're asked if it were you, they're dead set against what, it. They want to poll me or, or tap me. me. Right. Uh, not not no, you specifically. No, no. no. Well, Neil, you know, I don't. I th the, 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 the problem, I think, again, I don't want to sound excessively partisan here, even though I love partisanship, uh, because I think it's defining. You know who you're dealing with. I mean, one of the problems here is these polls. I mean, we, we're going to do ever. The, the media uses polls to create news stories. I think polls are just an extension of the editorial page, an excuse to get them on the front page. You can ask any question you want, get any answer you want, and then run around with that as a news story. And what I'm telling you is, President Bush doesn't. When it comes to this issue, it's irrelevant to it. He's going to do what's necessary to do. You know, I was thinking of President Bush and how he must have felt yesterday at that Coretta Scott King funeral. A lot of People were dumping on him, including a couple of former presidents. I'll tell you how he felt. Happy. These people are embarrassing themselves. These people, the Democratic Party, that, 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 that funeral yesterday, was, it had everything in it. It had a broke back mountain moment in it when Bishop Eddie embraced Bush, or Bush embraced him, gave him a kiss on the cheek. Then you had a bunch of Wellstone Memorial moments. I think, you remember the movie The Wedding Crasher? Two guys crash weddings to pick up dates. The Democratic Party crashes wedding or funerals. They're now the funeral crashers, and they're out there trying to pick up votes. And it's absurd if they think behavior like that, disrespecting a sitting president while he's there. Do you not, think he should have up and left? No. So he he's sat a, through hours of that. Look at remember the portrait unveiling uh, with Bill and Hillary Clinton in the White House. Yes. Epitome of class. 
he's very uh, conscious that this is a unique club, the President's Club. He's not going to do anything that reflects poorly on it. Uh, let other people do that. Uh, I was on the air yesterday, some people said, you think Bush should have gone up and left? No, 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 no. Bush doesn't look bad here. Bush looks above it all. These people are the ones that look petty. How did Jimmy Carter look? No different than Jimmy Carter has looked since the days before he was... This is how he got his Nobel Prize. You travel around the world and you beat up George Bush, and the Nobel Committee will say, you're our guy, and give you the prize. But normally you have the dignity of not doing it in front of George Bush. He did it in front of him. Yeah, but you see, it's another thing. Still did it with his back turned. Didn't have the guts to turn around and face him and say that. Neither did Joe Lowry. It's easy as heck to do it when the guy you're talking about is not watching you or looking at you. I think they're a bunch of cowards. I think they're, I think they're, they think they're entitled to power. They haven't been in power for a long time. They think it's being stolen from them, and they don't blame themselves and examine what are they doing wrong, perhaps, that is causing people not to vote for them or, or trust them when it comes to national security. But um, I, I, will, I will tell you that, that I think Coretta Scott King and Martin Luther King Jr., uh, if there was to be any anger from above looking down at that, uh, it would be from them. That is a sacred event, a funeral to, to memorialize and honor this woman and to take the occasion of that, to get in these cheap, partisan, childish little shots, makes the Democrats look exactly like they actually are. And I think the great thing that we're seeing, and folks make it pay attention to this, the Democratic Party is showing you who they are. They don't have an agenda to tell you who they are because they don't have the guts to tell you they want to raise your taxes and grow government and all that. But they're so angry and they're so irrational that their anger is causing them to shed the camouflage and shed the mask. And we're finding out they are mean-spirited, they are discriminatory, they are extremist, and they're wrong. I had no idea you were conservative. And we right. can't, they, I don't think that they're showing they cannot be trusted. But let me ask you, you, you talk about the kind of things that you, you know, claim Democrats are. Many in your own party have lashed out at this president for being because he submits bloated budgets, big deficits a big Medicare plan that's a social program that would rival anything FDR came right, up with. True. Is he a disappointment to conservatives? Some of them, sure. Yeah. Um, uh, there have been a lot of things that I have not been extremely happy about, but you don't get it all. I mean, I've, the spending has bamboozled me. Uh, it's been a, a little bit of a depressing aspect of the administration to me. Immigration, uh, understand the divide that exists in the Republican Party over that. But well, What is the defining issue for Rush Limbaugh? I mean, I, I've heard those arguments, Rush. We don't like the way he spends. We don't like the way a Republican Senate and Congress let him spend. Um, but it's terror. Everyone says it's terror. He's the guy on terror. Is that the Trump issue? Uh, I think it has to be right now. National security, as you, you've just shown these videos of what's going on around the world with this, uh, this cartoon controversy. Uh, but not, it's not to me, not just George W. Bush. I mean, he's uh, a wonderful man. I've gotten uh, to know him fairly well. Uh, but the opposite view of, of how to run the country that's being presented by the Democrats is just abhorrent to me. You know, we all want the same things. We all want prosperity. We all want liberty and freedom. We all want a great future for our kids, educational opportunities. But there are huge arguments over how to bring it about. People like me believe in the free market, capitalism, freedom, people working their own self-interest. The Democrats don't trust individuals to make the right decisions for themselves. They need people to be in a state of need because...